Uh, John Roberts reporting uh, from administration official. The president and the vice president met this evening in the Oval Office. The two had a good conversation discussing the week ahead and reflecting on the last four years of the administration's work and accomplishments. They reiterated that those who broke the law and stormed the Capitol last week do not represent the America First movement, backed by 75 million Americans, and pledged to continue the work on behalf of the country for the remainder of their term. That was... Um, one of the questions about their communication and what that relationship looks like uh, patched up, Jeff? Well, I'm, I think it's probably too early to say patched up, but certainly uh, critical and important that they met. I had spoken to one former White House official last week who uh, speculated that the two men might never speak again. So uh, this, is, this is perhaps the, the process in patching up that rift. What is interesting to me, though, also about that statement that you just read uh, from a senior administration official is it reads a little bit like a readout that the White House would release when the president meets with a foreign leader. Uh, and the fact that they needed to release a readout between the president and the vice president at all uh, is certainly reflective of how bad the breach was in the last few days. Well, sure. I mean, Kimberly, the president was out on that speech before all of that happened last Wednesday, uh, saying he was disappointed. He tweeted all these things about Pence and then all the stories about him not reaching out in the middle of the mayhem. Uh, what, what about the status of impeachment, where it goes and the timing here, as we have probably a little bit more than 200 hours left of this administration? Well, I think that's a crucial point uh, because it, it's not just there isn't the will for this in the Senate. You don't have the number of people you need to convict, but you don't have the time. Uh, it sounds as though the House is going to bring this up on Wednesday. Even if they did it all in a day, that would leave six days for the Senate to get through an entire impeachment process, and that would be just to then deprive the president of one day in office. Um, and look, I think one of the most important things uh, Senator Manchin said there is this is most hurting Joe Biden. Um, we don't have any of his uh, national security staff uh, or nominees confirmed yet. Um, that's unprecedented. And the Senate simply doesn't have time to do both of these. So it would be better if the vice president or the president-elect came out and, and told his party to stand down. Britt, in the same time, we have the acting Homeland Security Secretary stepping down, uh, saying it was warranted by the actions of the past few days. I mean, it's going to be a bumpy ride well, also, January 20th. Well, he also said, didn't he, Brett, that uh, because it had been, the court had ruled that he was not legally in office because of the manner of his appointment as acting, uh, that that was one of the reasons, too. But the, look, these people, people are leaving this administration. This administration is ending. It's days away, as you point out, from being completely gone. So um, these steps are not surprising, and it illustrates how little is left of the Trump, Trump administration and the Trump presidency. So it suggests to me, at least, how sort of unnecessary the act of impeaching would be, although, you know, a lot of people think, you know, this guy did this stuff, it was terrible, it was insurrection and all the rest of it. But, but um, as, as has been amply pointed out here, uh, this step's all over. The moment in which Joe Biden, the healer and the new president, is intended to step forward and convey his message of togetherness and unity to the American people on the, you know, on the day of his inauguration and, you know, to get done the uh, cabinet appointments that he's hoping swiftly to complete as he starts his administration. Jeff, you know, there's this uh, trip uh, tomorrow to the, to the border, and it's in a town called Alamo. Um, that was planned beforehand, but uh, a lot of people looking at this and saying, what will the final days of this administration look like? There's a lot of stories about aides trying to focus on the accomplishments of the past four years. Yes, I've reported that, too, that the, the president's staff uh, are encouraging him to discuss and focus on his legacy, uh, the, the last remaining days of governing, uh, and to talk about his accomplishments. But in that same breath, uh, I've spoken to White House officials who say it's tone deaf to be trying to do any of that in the wake of what happened at the Capitol. And so there is, I mean, one White House official telling me a few days ago that nobody cares at all. Uh, and that, I think, was a reflection both on, on some people at the White House and people elsewhere in the country. I don't think that is true for everyone. Uh, certainly there are people here at this White House who are deeply saddened and, and um, really, really, really upset about what happened on Wednesday because they feel, uh, not only because, but at least partially because they feel it's overshadowing what they believe uh, should be a strong legacy from this president. Yeah, I think that's a common refrain from Trump supporters I've talked to is uh, sadness. Uh, panel, thank you very much. We'll cover